Welcome to his dwelling place. We're so glad that you're here on this afternoon and we come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And on tonight, amen, I believe God has a word for us. And before we do that on tonight, we're going to go to a word of prayer and no other we have um, tonight, amen. Minister, amen. Rayford Mullins, so we so glad that he's with us here on tonight and he's gonna come with the word of prayer on tonight. Amen. Receive him as he comes. Yes, yes. Thank God for, for us being here on tonight, on today. What a blessing it is in the house of the Lord one more time. And I'm just blessed to know that wherever we are, we're always in the presence of God. Even as we're driving in our cars or in our home, in our bedrooms, or in the living room. Wherever we are, we are always in the presence of God. God is here. And as the pastor said before, his dwelling place. So as we go into prayer, dear gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you humbly as we know how, O oh God. Not to ask for anything, O oh God, but just tell you thank you, O oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for the things, O oh God, that we don't even understand, O oh God, we need you for, O oh God. God, we know, God, that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we could ask or think. God, you said we are your people, O oh God, and that we all know you, O oh God. And when we hear you, O oh God, we will come to you, O oh God. God, we know, God, that some things, O oh God, may not be clear for us, O oh God. But, I, God, I know that you are the God who sits high and looks low, O oh God. God, you know our rights and our wrong, O oh God. You said no good thing will you withhold from us, O oh God. So, God, even when we don't see the good things happen, oh, God, God, we know that they shall come to pass, oh, God, because we know, God, that you are a man of your word, oh, God, and if you said, oh, God, we know that you would do it, oh, God. God, we thank, oh, God, for the methods that's going to get ready to prepare for today, oh, God. God, we know, oh, God, that when we are decreased, oh, God, you become increased in us, oh, God. So reduce us, oh, God, so that you may be bigger in us, oh, God. No love is greater than your love, oh, God. So, God, we thank you, God, for this place, oh, God. God, we thank you, God, for dwelling with us, oh, God, on, in your name, oh, God. God, we know, God, that you sent your son, Jesus, oh, God, to die for our sins, oh, God. We wasn't worthy of it, oh, God. But, God, we thank you, God, for seeing fit, oh, God, that we be made new again, oh, God. God, we know you're amazing, oh, God. God, you're the same God back then, now, and to forevermore, oh, God. God, as we look towards our health, uh, towards the hill, we're coming to our health, oh God. God, we know you're able, oh God. God, we know you're getting ready, oh God, to set us free, oh God. God, we love you. We honor you. With all the many blessings, we ask your daughter, son, Jesus, and we pray. And it is so. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Thank you, amen, for that prayer on this afternoon. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. And he's worthy to be extinct. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. And he's worthy to be esteemed on tonight. Amen. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get to the word of God on tonight. We're not going to hold you, but we're going to say what thus says the Lord. And would you would turn with me to Joshua, the first chapter tonight, Joshua, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at uh, verse five. Joshua one, and we're going to start reading at verse five. It says this, it says, there should not be any man able to stand before you in all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee. Then he goes on to verse six and says, be strong in the Lord, uh, be, be strong and of good courage for unto this people I should divide for inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. He made a promise. Verse 7 says, Only be strong and very courageous, that thou may observe and do all according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from the 
turn not from the right hand or the left hand that thou mayest prosper in whatsoever thou goest. I'm going to stop right there. So let me go back up to verse five and let me expound on that just for a moment. So it says here, he says, there should not be any man be able to stand, don't have the capabilities, the ingenuity or the strategy to do what? To stand before thee all the days of your life. OK, so already we already see one promise that he's made in that scripture. Then the next thing that that we see is here. The second promise, he says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. Some might say he will be with me. So today I want to talk about don't be afraid. You're never alone. Don't be afraid. You're never alone. So as we continue to look at that, it says here, he says, I will be with thee. As, well, I'm going to go back up and say, he said, I, as I was with Moses, I so shall I be with thee. When he used that word be, be is a current word. Be is an eternal word. He says, even when we talk about be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And so that's what he's saying, that at this present moment, you need to understand, you need to grasp that I will be, I will be there, I will be there for you and he says be with thee i will never leave you nor forsake you now let me not rush through that but he says i will be with thee now that's what we got to understand when we look at all the promises of god what we got to understand that god is in all the promises that he gives unto us that he will be there he is the one that orchestrates the promise he's the one that performs the promise just like when when Abraham, when he um, was barren, when his uh, wife was also barren, and that he was uh, past 100 years old, he staggered not at the promises of God because he believed that who also promised was able to what? Also to perform. And so that's what we got to understand, that God is, is able to perform the, pre the promises that he gives us. But one thing God wants you to know that he said, I'm not going to do it without you. I'm going to be with you. OK, so you got to understand. Think about Peter when when the enemy desired to sift him as we he told Peter, I pray for you that your faith will not fail. What, what about that faith, that faith that I give unto you, that faith that that I'm, I'm engrafted in. And so when I give out that faith, I am with my word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with, with God, and the word was what? Was God. Then he goes on to tell us in John 15 and 7, he said, if you abide in me and your words, if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it will be done. Guess who's the doer of the done? God is the doer of what is done. So let's continue to look at this. He says, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor will I forsake thee so what would not fail his word would not fail he said heaven and earth would pass away but not one jot one ud one tittle of my word would ever pass not one speck of it would ever pass he said my words are held together amen by my word amen the universe is held together by my word God said listen I hasten to my word I follow after my word I esteem my word God said it will not fail somebody say it will not fail he said he would not fail then he goes on to say and i will not forsake thee he's coming back again to tell us that i'm with you and then he said i would not forsake you and he said i would not renounce you i won't turn away and he said i will not abandon you that's what forsake means he said i'm gonna be with you and you don't have to worry about me to abandon you because i will not forsake thee but here is my brothers and sisters where the problem comes in when you look at verse number six he says be strong and of good courage and so when we have to have courage courage means that there's some adversity there's some struggle there's some trial that's in front of us that we have to what we have to go to so first of all he says be strong be strong in what be strong in him that to understand that is going to be him on the inside of you working the word that he's already given unto you to come to pass and then he says what 
take that same thing that you're being strong in and be very courageous. That means in the midst of adversity, go forth. Somebody say go forth. That's right. We got to go forth. Then he said thou may observe and do according to all that is the law. That my servant Moses commanded thee and not turn from it. See, if we see God's going to be with us, but we got to stay with the word. When we stay with the word, God is able to perform the word. But God can perform a word that you don't stay with. The enemy comes and meet to steal that word. So you don't what walk in that word. So God won't be able to work the word that's on the inside of you. So he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. And that's what we got to understand. Isaiah 43 and two. Let's turn there. Isaiah 43 and two says this. It says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with you. OK, I hope you're understanding that tonight. He said, I will be with thee and through the rivers, I through the rivers. They should not overflow thee when thou walkest through the fire. They shall not kindle upon thee. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So he said, I'm going to be with you regardless of of the fire or regardless of the water and see the water tries to overtake us sometime we're gonna get there in just a moment even david said this in psalms 37 25 he said i have been young and i have been old yet and who can tell us better than david who 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 fought goliath that 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 took the the sheep and the lamb from the bear and the lions and the paw of them of the beast OK, who can tell us? And he's been he been running for his life all this time from Saul and all these different things that he was up against. OK, hiding out in caves and all that. But he said this. I have been young and I've been old. He said, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaking or his seed. What? begging for bread and so you got to understand that we are in his inheritance we got to know that god is with us see the thing about when god created us god god looked around and he made the he made everything but when he made us he looked into himself he took everything else what out of everything that was there but when he made us he looked at us and he made us according to his image and his likeness guess what he put his very characteristics and his very express self on the inside of us so you got to understand that on tonight david says even though i walk through the valley the shadow of death i will fear no evil why because you are with me so you got to just declare and you have to decree that god is what God is with me. That's what you got to be. That's what you got to do. You got to believe that God is with you in any circumstance and in every situation that you in. Do you hear me tonight? Amen. So when he was getting ready to leave, he talked to his disciples there after the Beatitudes. He told them in Matthew, the 28th chapter in the 20th verse, he says this. He says, teach them to observe all things I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. What? always even unto the end of the world that's right god is with you i want you to understand that whatever situation in whatever condition you may be in god is with you somebody say god is with me and i'm not going to be afraid amen don't be afraid you are never 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 and guess what never means never that's right sister anderson it means never that god is never going to forsake you and god is never going to leave you alone amen you know this person might run off this person might forsake you but god is going to be right there amen he's sticking closer than a brother did you hear what i'm saying hallelujah all right let's go let's move on a little bit further here when we look at proverbs 3 5 and 6 amen my favorite 
scripture in the whole entire Bible. I got plenty of favorites, but this is the top of the favorites. It says this, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And that means to come into relationship. That means to give him praise. And he says, I, and, and he, H-E, somebody say he, he will never leave you. He won't forsake you. He will be there and you won't be alone. He said, I will direct your path. And the thing about God directing your path, he's going to go ahead of you as he directs your path. Do you hear what I'm saying? God said, listen, I'm going to go before you. I'm not going to just be with you. I'm going to be there when you get there. Amen. And I'm going to be with you because he can be everywhere, every place at the same time. He's omnipresent. He's God Emmanuel. He said, I am with you. I'm presently with you. Do you hear what I'm saying on this afternoon? Say, I'm going to be with you. And so let's move on a little bit further here. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's going to be with you. He, he has made a covenant that he will be with you. He give us peace. And when God gives us his peace, God's going to be in the peace. God is the God of of peace amen so he's going to direct our path he's going to go before us amen and he's going to be there to wrap everything up because he's the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end okay now let's look at two things here let's look at exodus the 14th chapter and the 10th verse now i keep telling y'all i'm not leaving a, a message without going to exodus 14 praise god hallelujah i love exodus 14 amen it's probably, it's not, I, I can't say it's the favorite, but I, I love it. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus 14 and the 10th verse. Let's read that. Okay. Exodus 14 verse 10. Says this. And Pharaoh drew nigh. And the children of the Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld the Egyptians march after them. Listen to what you read say here. And they were so afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, be, and, and, the, and they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore, we have dealt with us, carried us away out of Egypt. Is it not the word that we tell you in Egypt, saying, let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than, than, than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, fear not is something about when we go through some calamity we get some adversity we get some news and the word of god that he's been giving us and teaching us and and, and, and let us out with we forget so quickly the Bible says be careful that we don't let these precious promises slip. I already told us that the enemy comes immediately to steal the word that was sown in your heart. Then the Bible talks about in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, 35 verse through the 37. It talks about that we don't cast away your confidence where it has great recompense of a war. It says what is that our, our confidence is that of faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? So it says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we so quickly what we have heard God said, we we let it go. And that's what happened to the children of Israel here is that they became so afraid when they heard the who's of the Pharaoh's army coming after them. Amen. They heard him charging after them and the, and the word that God had given them, gave them that I'm going to take you to a land that flow with milk and honey started to dissipate. Amen. It started to, to empty out like a, a tire going flat. Amen. And that's what happened to them is that they they lost the word. Don't lose the word. And they became so afraid. So I want you to I want to tell you is don't forget the word of God and don't forget that God is with you. There is no need to be afraid. OK, 
There is no need to to come into anxiety, to come into a place of unease. You just got to know that God is with me. You need to wake up every morning, amen, and say God is with me. When the enemy comes, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the, the spirit of the Lord will do what? It will lift up a standard before him. But you just got to decree that God is with me. That's all you need to know that God is with you. Amen. And so he goes on to say here, and we're, we're at verse number 13. It says, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, do what? Stand still. And simply stand still just means give God some praise. Amen. And God said he would inhabit the praises of his people. And not that he got to come get to you. He's already there, but you will know that he's there when you give him some praise. Amen. The presence of God will arrest us. Amen. As we yield to him, he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. An eternal word. God said, listen, salvation is everywhere waiting on you. All you have to do is decree it and believe that I am there. And then he goes on to say, which he will. Somebody say he will. He will show you today for the Egyptian who you have seen. You will see them no more forever. Amen. And then he goes on. For the Lord shall fight for you. All you have to do is what? Hold your peace. God said, I'm there with you. Do you understand that I am with you? And all you have to do is believe that I'm with you. So what we got to do is start capturing when our faith starts to, to dissipate. When that anxiety comes, when that trouble comes, we need to just say and decree that God is with me and I am not afraid. David said it this way. I'm not going to be afraid of them. They came to what to eat up my flesh and they stumbled and fell. Why? Because God is with me. And all you have to do is get that praise on your lips and the praise and the praise is this. God is with me. That is a praise all by itself. Do you hear what I'm saying? That God is with me. What, what praise can be higher than that? Then say that God is with me. That, that's what Moses did when he went to Pharaoh. Amen. His, his stepdad, when he went to Pharaoh, his stepdad, he said, God is with me. Who sent you? God sent me. He's with me. He's with me now because he's I am that I am the all existent one. He is with me and he's telling me to tell you to let my people go. Hallelujah. See, that's all God said. Who sent me? That I'm going to be with you. Amen. Let's look at another verse here. Let's look at Mark 4. Oh, we just got to know that God is with us. And when we know that God is with us, we, we, we know that nothing in this world will stop, stop us. Mark 4, I'm going to look at verse 35. Mark 4, 35. You just got to know that God is with you. 35, the, starting at 35, it says this. And in the same day when evening was come, he said unto them, let's pass over unto the other side. Those words are written in red. Let us pass over unto the other side. Somebody say, let us pass over. Oh, that's right. Let us go to the land that flows with milk and honey. Okay. We got these promises from God and God is in his promises okay verse 36 says this and when they had sent away the multitudes he took even him even as he was in the ship and they were also with him other little ship and there arose a great storm here is the, here is here is why we have to be strong and have good courage because as we go and do the will of God, there is going to be things that's going to what pop up in our life. James says it like this in James and James one. He says, uh, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. See, things just have a way of just popping up on us. And when things pop on us, pop up on us, we got to what we got to be strong. Be strong in him. How do we be strong? By giving him praise, by giving him reverence, de 
declaring and decreeing who he is, that he's what? He's Jehovah Shalom. Amen. That he's Jehovah Shama, that he's always there. Amen. So back here, he says, and there arose a great storm of wind. Have a storm just have ever storm ever blew in your life? There's always a different type of storm. There's storms that we bring on ourselves. There's storms that the enemy brings. There's storms that that just pop up all of a sudden. And there's the storms that the enemy brings to our table. Amen. And the waves beat into the ship and it was now full. Amen. Sometimes we just had it up to here with some stuff. Amen. The devil and, and ourselves keep curating these situations and then they and he was in the hinder part of the ship on a pillow what was he doing resting he was sleeping and they awoke him and said to him master do you not care see we think god don't care that god don't see that god don't know what our situation is but god knows because not because and what god wants us to be at rest he said, do you not care that we perish? God said, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. He said, I care for you. And he arose. And, and the Bible says he rebuked the wind. He spoke sharply to that devilish thing that tried to come in and, 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 and run you crazy. And then he said unto the sea, peace be still. So he called peace, which was already there, to come into existence. And he told it to be still and to bring settlement subtlety to the situation bring stillness to the situation to bring calm to the situation and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and they said on uh, and they said unto and and he said unto them why are you so fearful ye of no faith another translation said of little faith and then another one says where is your faith and so one thing you find here that jesus was with them the the, the man of god was with them and they should have been at peace because God told them that we are going to the other side. God is saying that I will not leave you, neither will I forsake you. We are going over to the other side. So we can't let the, the debacles of the storms of our life, the trials and the tribulations that we're in, stop, stop us from believing that God is not with you. And that's what the enemy wants, is he wants you to think that God is not with you in your situation, even your situation. David said, said it like this, I like, what, like what he said, that he said, uh, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from from me is that you got to understand that he, he won't take it away. He going he's going to be what he's going to be right there with us in the midst of our storm. Even when when Peter got off the ship and Peter was the one that asked to get off the ship. God didn't tell him to get off the ship. He asked if it be you bid me to come out unto the water to walk to thee and guess what as soon as peter got off guess what he started listening to the winds he started listening to the waves he started listening to those things he started looking at them and he began to sink and he said lord save me and the thing is god's hand is never too short that he can save and neither is his ear too heavy that he can hear. But God just needs you to know that he is there. The wrath that we will get in the end is not that, you know, some of the sins that we do day to day and, and we commit. But the sin of not declaring that God is real and God is not there. That's what we got to understand tonight. That God is there. I just want to encourage you, whatever your situation Whatever your circumstance is, that the hand of God is there. He's ready to provide you whatever you need. He's ready to give you the peace that you need. He's ready to walk you through down the path to get to where he wants you to go. But you just got to believe that tonight. Do you hear what I said? So you see tonight, don't let fear cast out, cast doubt that God is there in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? He told us in Mark 22, he told us not to doubt. If you doubt not in your heart, amen, 
So let's not doubt that God is not working in our life. He's working. He's there. He's going afraid. He's going ahead of us. So don't so don't fear. Don't be afraid. And so what we need is the word of God with us at all times. And he goes on in Joshua and he starts saying that this book of law should not depart out of the mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night and do all according that is written therein that thou made thy way prosperous and that you will have good success. And what is that word? That word is meditate on him day and night. The Bible says this, that he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind that stays upon him. You keep your mind on him. God said, I'm going to be there. I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. He said, I left you peace. And he said, guess what? I, I'm the very God of peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He said, you just got to believe that I'm there. Come on. Do you believe that he's there tonight? Hallelujah. He's there. He's there. He's right there. Hallelujah. I remember some years ago and I mean, it's been some years ago. Amen over it's been oh two decades ago and i remember one night after probably bible study i was on the way uh to a friend's house and i had some spaghetti in the car i remember it's like yesterday right i had some spaghetti in the car the car was blue and um and i was driving there on on a uh, sparkman drive and as i was driving on sparkman drive Amen. A drunk driver came over on my side of the lane and it was a hit on collision. And, that, and at that time, amen, the seatbelt laws probably wasn't in effect. So guess what? I, TD was not wearing his seatbelt. Amen. But there was a seatbelt that came from the back seat. Amen. And wrapped his arms around me. Amen. And held me to the seat. Somebody say God is always there and he's never and you're never alone. Amen. And I believe it was the angel of God, amen, that came in and it held me to the seat, amen, amen. And I was not hurt, amen. So you, gotta, you got to believe that he's there, amen. You got to believe that he's coming and that he, that he is there, that he's coming to, to secure you at any time. He said that he gave his angels charge over thee, hallelujah. Even when the man of God prayed and he was looking for the prayer for 21 days and God said, listen, I sent this at the minute you prayed, I sent it to you. Amen. But the Prince of Persia held it up. So I sent Michael to take care of that, to get that word to you. He said, I, I hasten to my word. I fall after my word. So God said, I would never leave you. I never forsake you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God, for your word, God. That you're Jehovah Shammah, that you're God Emmanuel, God, and you're omnipresent, and that you're always there, Lord. We thank you for being there, God. So, God, anything in us, oh God, that is causing doubt that you're not there with us in our trials, our tribulations, our conditions, our sickness, God, and all those things that befall us, God, help us to understand tonight, God, that you are there. We know that you're there. We would decree that you're there, oh God. When we can't feel you, God, when we can't trace you, God, we will know that you're there, oh God. And we believe that you're there because the breath is in our bodies, Lord. And you breathe the breath of life in us, Lord, that Zoe on the inside of us. So we thank you for the breath, oh God, that we breathe, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that, that the neurological activity of our brains, Lord. We thank you, God, just for being there, oh God. Hallelujah on tonight. And we praise you and we magnify you, God, in everything, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you know everything about us. You know the number of hairs that are on our heads, Lord. We thank you, oh God, that you said that you stand at the door and you knock, God. And then we will open up, oh God. You will show yourself unto us. And we praise you for that. We honor you for that. God, look on your people on tonight. God, make yourself present unto them, oh God. Let your presence be known, God. We praise you, God. We magnify you and we honor you. And we thank you, God, for every giver on tonight. Bless them, oh God. Give them a hundredfold. Give provision, God, and prosperity in their homes, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Listen, pray people of God, listen, the cash app is on, on, up on there for you. You know the thing for PayPal. Listen, don't forget to give. Amen. Let God bless you and let God keep you is our prayer. Go in peace.